Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna exhaustively test these four high-end laser and LED smart projectors from BenQ, Anchor, XGME, and Dangbei to figure out which one is the best and if any of them are worth buying. Right up front, let me just say that if you bought any of these four projectors, I feel really confident that you'd be happy with your choice because all of them are really good, like super impressive. But on my channel, I can't just stop there. And if I'm gonna drop a big chunk of change on a new piece of tech, I need to know which one is the best and why. And if you're here watching this video, you're probably that kind of person too. So let's start out by looking at the projectors themselves. These are all a newer style of projector designed to be a little bit more stylish and not necessarily confined into a home theater space. That said, when they're all sitting next to each other, there's actually a huge difference in size that I wouldn't have picked up on from looking at their pictures online. The largest by far is this 14 pound giant from BenQ, the $2,000 X3000i, which is a low latency gaming focused projector with a four LED light source with an estimated lifetime of 20,000 hours on high brightness. For connectivity, it's got two HDMI ports with an audio return channel, optical and analog audio out, and a USB port. In addition to those two external HDMI ports, there's also an internal HDMI and USB connection attached to the included BenQ streaming stick to give this projector smart functionality. There's also a 12 volt trigger port and an RS-232 port like you might find on a more traditional projector. On the bottom are two front leveling feet and a traditional set of projector mounting points. Or if you plan on putting the X3000i on a shelf near the ceiling, it can also be inverted and rear leveling feet can be added to tilt the projector downward. The X3000i supports 4K at 60 Hz or 1080p at up to 240 Hz, where it claims an insanely fast 4 milliseconds of response time. BenQ also claims that the X3000i has 3000 ANSI lumens, which is a huge amount of brightness for an LED projector, so we're definitely going to be testing both of those claims today. The second largest projector weighs in at just under 11 pounds, the brand new $2,199 Anchor Nebula 4K Laser, which as the name suggests is a laser light source 4K projector. The Nebula 4K Laser claims 25,000 hours of light source lifespan at 2,400 ISO lumens. And it's clearly focused on portability since in addition to its non-removable handle, 30 watts of built-in speakers and Android TV 10. It also has autofocus, auto keystone, and auto screen fit, which are all handy features when you're going to be moving your projector around a lot. Also useful is the fact that there is no external power brick, so it's more or less a pick up and go situation. The Nebula 4K laser also has a built-in compartment to plug in the Nebula streaming stick, but only has one external HDMI port, one USB, and a plug labeled aux, which appears to be an analog audio out port. Unfortunately, the Nebula lacks any kind of leveling feed and only has a single quarter 20 style tripod mount on the bottom, which combined with its 11 pound weight makes ceiling mounting a little bit sketchy. But I'd argue that ceiling mounting isn't really what this projector is for. Slightly smaller than the Nebula weighing in at 10 pounds by itself or just over 11 pounds with its large external power brick is the least expensive projector in this video. $1,800 gets you the Dangbei Mars Pro, which is a 4K laser projector that recently popped up on Amazon from a company that I've never heard of. However, Dangbei claims some really impressive specs like 25,000 light source hours at 3200 ANSI lumens, HDR10+, HLG, and MEMC. But as you might know, it's pretty common for projectors from random brands on Amazon to have inflated stats on their product pages. So we're definitely gonna be verifying as many of those claims as we can with actual testing. Unlike the BenQ and the Nebula, the Dangbei has a form of Android 9 built in instead of on a streaming stick. And for external ports, there are two HDMI ports that support HDMI 2.1 and eARC. And there's also two USB ports, analog and optical audio out, and even an ethernet port to hardwire your internet connection. On the bottom of Dangbei's glossy black exterior are four adjustable leveling feet with about a centimeter of travel each, a quarter 20 tripod mount, and if you remove three of those feet, you can use the threaded holes for a traditional projector ceiling mount. And then last, but definitely not least, is the $1,899 XGME Horizon Pro 4K, which is probably the best selling model of this new stylish projector category. The Horizon Pro is the smallest by far and weighs in at just six and a half pounds or just over eight pounds, including its power brick. The Horizon Pro uses a more standard three LED light source and claims 25,000 light source hours at 2200 ANSI lumens. Aside from the slightly lower brightness than the other projectors, the Horizon Pro seems to have it all with features like autofocus and keystone, HDR10, MEMC, Android TV 10, fast response gaming mode, and powerful onboard speakers. And it does all that in a surprisingly compact form factor. Similar to the Dangbei, the Horizon Pro has two HDMI ports, two USB, optical and analog audio out, and an ethernet jack. Also like the Dangbei, the Horizon Pro has four leveling feet, 
quarter 20 tripod mount and the ability to remove those feet and use a standard projector ceiling mount. So let's get started testing out those claims. Starting with the big stuff. In my opinion, when it comes to projectors, you can basically never have enough brightness. If you have a purpose-built theater room with no windows, black walls, ceilings, carpet, and furniture, then too much brightness might be possible, but for normal people with normal living rooms, brighter is better. The standard measurement for projector brightness is the ANSI lumen, and it's calculated by projecting an all-white image, measuring the brightness at nine different segments, and then averaging those measurements and multiplying by the screen size in square meters. In this video, I also decided to go a little more in depth with my testing for these projectors and measured not only the white brightness, but also the black levels and red, green, blue, and pink color brightness. Overall, the brightest projector that I measured was the BenQ X3000i with 2,269 ANSI lumens on its bright picture setting. However, on that preset, the color brightness was terrible, with just 108 lumens for red and 304 for blue. Using standard picture mode reduced the white brightness to 1,853 ANSI lumens, while tripling the red brightness and increasing the blue to 519 lumens. With white brightness and color brightness added together, the brightest overall projector was the Dangbei Mars Pro, with 2,082 ANSI lumens of white brightness and a total of 4,785 lumens when combining all the individual color scores. The Nebula 4K Laser put out 1,455 ANSI lumens on white and had a combined score of 3,708, while the dimmest projector that I tested was the XGME Horizon Pro, which measured just 1,223 ANSI lumens on white and had the lowest combined score of 3,044. Contrast is also super important in the projector world, and the standard for measuring it is called Full On, Full Off, or FOFO. Using this method, the BenQ X3000i had the best contrast of around 900 to 1, followed by the Dangbei Mars Pro at 710 to 1, then the Nebula Laser at 655 to 1, and last was the XGME Horizon Pro at 488 to 1. You might notice how far off these numbers are from the claimed values on their product pages, and I'm not claiming that my test results are more accurate than theirs, but I do know that all my tests were done under the exact same real world conditions, so they're definitely still useful for comparing these projectors to each other. But enough with the numbers, let's take a look at how these things actually translate into picture quality. I spent the last two weeks watching movies, sports, and playing Xbox games on these four projectors in all kinds of different lighting conditions. And this is what I found. Under ideal lighting conditions, meaning at night with the lights off, all the projectors expectedly looked amazing. I use a 120 inch 0.8 gain ambient light rejecting screen from Vividstorm in my living room, and I had no complaints about any of the projectors. I thought the BenQ X3000i was the most accurate as far as showing colors and contrast as the filmmaker intended, while the Dangbei Mars Pro produced an image with more of a wow factor. Some people call it the best buy demo effect because the image looks unnaturally saturated, but there's a reason that they use it on the showroom floor. It looks incredible and it sells displays. The same was mostly true during the day with the blinds open and some lights on, but we start to get an idea of how powerful these projectors actually are, and we start to see some differences in their brightness. Again, projecting onto my 120 inch 0.8 gain ALR screen, the Dangbei Mars Pro looked exceptionally bright and had great detail and contrast, while the Nebula 4K Laser had the best black levels, but was harder to see the detail in the darker areas of the screen. The XGME Horizon Pro was the most saturated, while the BenQ had more muted colors, but still maintained good detail and contrast. Pushing these projectors to their absolute limits, I brought them outside onto my patio for some daytime projection, competing with the ambient light from midday Florida sun. And in this test, the Dangbei Mars Pro definitely produced the most watchable image with vibrant colors and pretty good contrast. And after that, I think I preferred the image from the Nebula Laser 4K, then the BenQ, and last, the XGME Horizon Pro seemed to struggle in this test due to its lower brightness. That means that overall, I personally preferred the Dangbei Mars Pro image in every single lighting condition. But overall, there wasn't that much difference in these four projectors, and as I said at the beginning of the video, they were all really good. So let's move on to some of the big differences in these projectors, starting with their smart OS. As I mentioned earlier, the BenQ X3000i and Nebula 4K Laser have compartments to plug in a streaming dongle with Android 10. And as a result, there's a pretty distinct separation between the projector controls and the smart OS controls. And I actually think that's really nice because if the smart OS dongle ever fails, then the rest of the projector is still totally usable. And it opens up the possibility to just upgrade that portion of the projector later on without replacing the entire unit. In contrast, the XGME Horizon Pro and Dangbei Mars Pro have their smart OS built in and everything feels much more tied together. Though, as a quick note, all the remotes do have a dedicated projector settings button, which is a really important feature for being able to tweak settings without needing to navigate back through the home screen. The XGME, BenQ, and Nebula are all running Android TV 10. 
but that doesn't mean they have the same capabilities. For whatever reason, Netflix requires each specific device to be Netflix certified and doesn't give out that designation easily. So out of the four projectors, the only one that can run Netflix natively is the Nebula Laser 4K. Though I have heard rumors that BenQ is working on a replacement for their streaming dongle that will be Netflix certified. As far as other app compatibility, I didn't have any issues for apps like YouTube TV or Disney Plus on any of the Android 10 devices. The Dangbei though, oof. The Dangbei is running some strange version of Android 9, and when you log into it with your Google account, it gets detected as a Samsung Galaxy A3, which is a cell phone from 2017. You can install apps like Netflix, YouTube TV, and Disney Plus, but none of them work. And as a workaround, there's an internet browser to load the web versions of those streaming services, but that also doesn't work. In fact, other than Plex and the local media player, nothing on the Dangbei Smart OS works, and you should basically consider it a non-smart projector which isn't a complete deal breaker because a Chromecast or a Fire Stick gives you all the same functionality as Android 10 for around $50. But if a selling point of these projectors is their sleek looks and portability, then needing another device is a little bit annoying. Another thing that I typically wouldn't worry about on a projector is the sound quality, since projectors are usually paired with surround sound systems or at least a sound bar. But again, I think the target market for these projectors might be a little bit different and having a good set of internal speakers does actually matter. I'm gonna play the clips first and then I'll give you my opinions. From a new ally, a spy in the first order. A spy. Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally, a spy in the first order. A spy. Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally, a spy in the first order. A spy. In all situations, I thought the XGME Horizon Pro had the cleanest, fullest and loudest sound by a pretty significant margin. After that was the Nebula Laser 4K, which had nice full sound, but was sometimes difficult to make out vocals when there was a lot of background noise. The Dangbei Mars Pro had decent bass, but lacked high end, which made it sound a little bit muffled, but I much preferred that over the BenQ X3000i, which was plenty loud, but lacked low end, and the internal speakers were way too tinny for me to be able to watch a whole movie on them. And in those clips, you might have also noticed the fan noise. So here's what each projector sounds like just by itself. Technically, the Nebula Laser 4K was in third, with the BenQ being the loudest. However, my Nebula Laser 4K had a really annoying high-pitched power supply whine any time the projector was plugged in, not just when it was on. My ears are particularly sensitive to high-pitched noises, so it was really annoying for me, but I don't know if this sound was specific to my unit only, and I know a lot of people can't even hear those super high-pitched frequency noises. As I said though, the BenQ does have a pretty substantial amount of fan noise, and that's because it needs a lot of cooling to deliver the power needed to make the LED projector so bright. During my brightness testing, I also measured the power draw of each projector on full brightness white. 
The lowest power consumption was the Dangbei Mars Pro at 142 watts, then the XGME at 144 watts, next the Nebula Laser 4K drew 149 watts, and then the BenQ had more than double that at 331 watts. However, even at 331 watts, projectors still are by far the most cost-effective way to get a large screen, since even an 85-inch TV can draw as much as 500 watts. So the BenQ is definitely bigger and more power hungry than the other projectors, but it definitely is less focused on being a portable projector and more on delivering the best gaming experience possible. If you've never played Forza on a 120 inch screen, you are really missing out. But a downside of projectors is often input lag, which is the time between when the video game console sends out the video signal and when it shows up on the screen. I tested the input lag against my LG C9 TV, and I found that in gaming mode at 4K 60Hz, the BenQ had an input lag of about 18 milliseconds, the XGME Horizon Pro was around 38 milliseconds, the Dangbei was at 46 milliseconds, and the Nebula came in at 71 milliseconds. The difference between 18 milliseconds and 71 milliseconds is about 4 frames of 4K 60Hz signal. In this footage using an HDMI splitter with my Xbox, you can see that the BenQ shows the goal animation first, then the XGME, then the Dangbei, and then four frames later the Nebula Laser finally shows that animation. I unfortunately can't measure the ultra-fast modes available on the BenQ since I don't have an HDMI splitter capable of 1080p 120Hz, let alone 240Hz, but according to BenQ the input lag at 1080p 120 should be 8 milliseconds and 1080p 240 should be 4 milliseconds, and I tend to believe them since my testing more or less confirmed their claims for the input lag at 4K60. For most people, input lag under 50 milliseconds is going to be indistinguishable, but for hardcore gamers and Twitch-based games, every millisecond counts as long as you've got the skills to back it up. The Nebula does have a picture mode called Extreme Gaming that supposedly reduces the lag further using a 1080p signal, but in my testing it wasn't any different. Also important to note is that I tested all these input lags with no keystone adjustment, and any other image processing will cause more input lag. Because the BenQ is more focused on gaming performance, it doesn't have the advanced keystoning that you'd get on the other three projectors, so it needs to be mounted more or less in line with the screen. It does, however, have optical zoom instead of digital, which gives you a little bit more freedom with how far you place the projector away from the screen. The Nebula Laser 4K, Dangbei Mars Pro, and Horizon Pro all have throw ratios around 1.25, meaning to get a 100-inch diagonal screen, they need to be around 109 inches away from the screen while the zoom lens on the BenQ adjusts the throw ratio from 1.15 to 1.5, so you could place the projector anywhere between 100 and 130 inches away from the screen for the same 100 inch diagonal screen. And since it's an optical zoom, you don't lose any resolution or introduce any input lag. Speaking of that advanced keystoning, the other three projectors have sensors on the front that do autofocus, auto keystone, and auto screen fit, but they definitely don't all work the same. The Dangbei automated focus almost never works until you hit the OK button to fine tune itself. And in the two weeks that I've been using it, I don't think I've ever seen the Dangbei get its auto keystone right. That said, the manual four point keystone works great and it's really easy to use. The Nebula Laser 4K does a little bit better than the Dangbei, but it still fails most of the time. And the manual adjustments are a little bit more annoying to get to since you need to disable automatic keystoning to get to the manual options. XGME, on the other hand, has been doing automatic keystone and automatic focus for a while, and they are the undisputed champion. Not only does it create the largest screen possible from any given angle, but the screen fit works amazingly well, and the whole process is surprisingly fast. The other great thing is despite how accurate it is, it always immediately gives you the option to fine tune the screen without having to go back through any other menus. So even though all these projectors are really good, I think my conclusions are actually pretty straightforward. If you want a projector to travel with, bring to a campsite, a tailgate, or a cookout, then the Nebula Laser 4K is an easy pick. It's sturdy, bright, loud, it's got a built-in power circuit, and it's got the added bonus of supporting Netflix out of the box. I wouldn't recommend the Nebula 4K Laser for gaming focus setup since the input lag was pretty high, and permanently ceiling mounting it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. If you are primarily using your projector for gaming and are planning on a more permanent setup with a ceiling mount, a screen, and separate audio system, then the BenQ X3000i is the obvious choice with its absolutely insane gaming performance, great colors, great brightness, and the Android TV 10 dongle is a nice added bonus. If what you're looking for is an easy to use projector that you can carry around anywhere in the house and set up in seconds with nearly perfect auto keystone and focus, then the XGME Horizon Pro is perfect for you. It has the best sound, great picture, good app compatibility except for Netflix, and a very competitive price, all in a surprisingly light and compact package. And this thing just works. If my parents or sisters asked me for a smart projector recommendation, the Horizon Pro would definitely be my answer. And then there's the Dangbei. I'm not gonna lie, I love it and I hate it. 
but I mostly love it. It looks amazing in every single lighting condition. The sound isn't as good as the Xtreme, but it's definitely good enough to use on its own. The input lag is totally acceptable for casual gaming. I like the sleek look of it and the mounting options. The auto keystone sucks, but the manual one works fine. And don't forget, it's also the cheapest projector in this video. In fact, I like this projector so much that the inclusion of this garbage version of Android actually makes me angry. Literally nothing works on it and they would have been much better off leaving it out entirely and selling the Mars Pro as a dumb projector. Thankfully, through the magic of HDMI CEC, you can just plug in a Fire TV stick or Roku and control it with the Dangbei remote, but unfortunately adding that smart OS adds one more thing that can break and one more software vulnerability and I decided to just leave mine fully disconnected from the internet. Also, there's one more thing that I need to get off my chest. Why did they call this the Mars Pro? There is already a portable projector on the market called the Mars 2 Pro, and it's made by Anchor. It looks like this. Speaking of which, look at how similar the remotes are for the Anchor Mars 2 Pro and the Dangbei Mars Pro. There is no way that they could have missed this in a market analysis, and it doesn't make me super confident in Dangbei as a company. And that's the other huge problem preventing me from giving an overwhelming recommendation for the Dangbei Mars Pro. Before this projector came out, I had never heard of them as a company. So if your projector breaks and you need to contact them for help or replacement, I'm not sure how that process would go. In contrast, Nebula is owned by Anchor, Xgmi is a well-established projector brand on their own, and BenQ has been making high-quality projectors since the 1980s. So yes, in my opinion, the Dangbei is the most well-rounded projector with a price tag that makes it extremely tempting. But if I were you, I wouldn't buy it unless you were okay with the possibility that it will break well before that 20,000 hour lifespan and you'll have no support or recourse. Though if you do buy it on Amazon, at least you've got their free 30-day return policy to protect you against a DOA projector. Speaking of which, I've got links down in the description for all the projectors in this video, and if this video was helpful for you to decide which projector to buy, I would appreciate if you could use those links, since as an Amazon affiliate, I get a small commission at no cost to you. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel, and if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.